Okay, so around the start of 2021, I decided to entirely swap over from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve for basically all of my editing. And initially when I decided to make the switch, I was kind of worried that my workflow would slow down a lot because there would be a lot of new stuff that I had to get used to. But luckily I was able to carry over my most important editing tricks from Premiere into Resolve. And because I was able to do that, I got used to Resolve a lot quicker than I expected. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what those editing tricks are as well as how you can apply them to your own workflow and hopefully end up saving yourself hours when editing. And even though both of these are gonna be huge time savers, I really think that the second one is the more important one because it's actually two tips in one. So the first tip I want to share with you is using stacked timelines and this one is great because it not only saves you time but it helps you keep your projects organized. So anytime I import my footage and conform it to whatever frame rate I'm going to be working in, I make three separate timelines. One is going to be for all of my footage, one is going to be for my selects, and one for my final video. Obviously, I'm going to drop all of my clips in the one that's meant for all the footage, and then I'm going to go through and watch everything, and whenever a clip stands out and looks like I want to use it, I'm going to select it and hold down Alt, and then click the up arrow to move it to a higher track, with the ones I really like being lifted to an even higher track. Once I'm done picking out my good clips, I'm going to select all of the ones that I lifted and then I'll copy them and put them in my select timeline. Here I'm going to cut down the clips I liked to the parts I think are going to work well in my final edit and at the end I should have a pretty compact selection of usable clips. Once I'm ready to start working on my final edit, instead of going through and copy pasting clips from my selects to my working timeline one by one, what I do is I click up here on the left to show my timelines as tabs. Then from the button on the right here, I'm able to open and stack two timelines on top of each other. One of them is going to be for my selects and the other one is going to be my working timeline. Then I can just go back and forth dragging whatever clips I need straight over from one to the other. And this way I can put together my working edit way quicker because I'm able to see both of the timelines at the same time instead of having to open them back and forth and having to remember which clips I've already moved over and which ones I still need. So this is gonna make it a lot easier to stay organized with your footage and it's gonna be a lot quicker to move around clips to different places when you're putting together your actual edit. It might not sound like it, but this is gonna be way better and way faster than trying to do absolutely everything on just one timeline. This next tip is probably my favorite editing tip of all time because it is no joke saved me so many hours from editing over the years. It's actually two tips in one, but they kind of work in a similar way. So I'm just gonna group them together, but I guess that means that you're getting a bonus tip. And it's something that saves you a lot of time by allowing you to cut down your clips like 10 times faster. So for this first part, you wanna open up your keyboard customization menu and then look for these two commands, split clip and ripple delete. I've set mine to the number one and number four buttons on my keyboard, but you can set them up to whatever is comfortable for you. So the way I use this one is for longer clips where I might need to cut out multiple sections like in an interview, for example. If the person speaking makes a mistake, I'm gonna place my playhead just before the mistake and click one to add a cut in the clip. Then I'm gonna move to where the mistake is over and I'm gonna add another cut. After that, I'm going to select the part that I want to get rid of and I'm going to click 4, which is going to delete the part with the mistake and snap everything else together so you're not left with any gaps in your timeline. This is going to make it way faster to get rid of multiple sections of a longer clip without having to constantly go back and forth between your razor tool and then your pointer tool and deleting everything the normal way. For the second part of this tip, you want to go into your key bindings again and this time look for start to playhead and end to playhead. I've got mine set to the number two and three keys, but you can set them up to whatever is comfortable for you. So this one I mainly use for cutting down shorter clips like B-roll for example. The way it works is I'll find the point where I want my clip to start, I'll put my playhead right there and click two in order to cut everything from that specific clip before the playhead and then snap the clip back with the one before it so there's no gaps left. Then I'm gonna move my playhead to where I want my clip to end. I'll click three and that is gonna cut everything after the playhead and snap everything together. Just keep in mind that if you haven't selected a specific clip, all of these key bindings are gonna cut through any clips that are under your playhead. So if you just need to 
cut only one, make sure to select that first. So because I've set up these four key bindings on keys that are close to each other, I can essentially use all of them with just one hand and then move my playhead around with the other. So this tip can save you a ton of time from the process of having to cut down your clips and it's an absolute game changer if you wanna be a faster editor. So make sure to try it out and you're instantly gonna notice how much of a difference it makes. So I really hope you found this video useful and you also decide to try out these editing tips because I genuinely believe that they can save you a ton of time and effort when editing in Resolve. So if you have any questions or if you maybe feel like I didn't explain something clearly enough, you can go ahead and drop me a comment and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. As always, I want to thank you if you made it to the end of this video because it genuinely means a lot to me. I would also appreciate it if you decided to stick around by subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.